student my name is confident welcome to our revision session of grade 9 as you are preparing for your final exams and this section focuses on algebra so what I'm doing is I'm looking at each and every topic that you find in your grade 9 and I'm going through the previous papers so that you can use these previous papers to prepare for your final exams so if you're in grade 9 this is a good opportunity for you to prepare for your final exams through these revision sessions. So I'll be bringing each and every section across and you'll be able now to follow up on these. Now I'm going to also load this in the grade nine um, channel uh, and you can just filter through the 24 minute lesson and you can find it under grade nine. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, I will encourage you to subscribe to our channel and also to turn on that notification bell so that you can be notified of every time we are posting a new video. This can be of great help to you. So now let us look at this revision session. As I said, it's one of the uh, old papers. This is 2015. And this question paper was written in Gauteng. And uh, as I said, it's mathematics uh, grade nine. And let us look at the question that focuses, as I said, on algebra. And okay, this is the instruction part to say um, how the paper was uh, set up and what my interest is, as I'm saying. You see, there are different content areas. Question number one was on multiple choice based on all five content areas. So there are five content areas they are going to ask you. And then section B is based also on five content areas. And this is what I'll be bringing to you when I'm doing the revisions. I'll be looking at number, numbers, operations, and relations. In one section, I'll look at patterns and algebra. And then I'll also look at algebra, functions, space and shapes measurement and data handling but the most important one that i'm interested in is algebra as well as that part there of algebra so for today this is the area that i'm interested in so if you are also uh, having some challenges on algebra i will encourage you to tune in and this will be of help to you so now let us look at these questions um as I said, this is for grade nine. So you can see that algebra actually begins in question 3.2 of that paper. And you can see that it says 3.2, you need to factorize completely. So whenever you're dealing with questions like factorizing, you must know that this section actually deals with, with algebra. And also the marker locations are important because it helps you in a way to see um, the amount of work that is necessary uh, for you to do in that particular paper. So let us quickly look at these questions. And the first part that I'm having here, uh, if I can just work some of them in this part, or rather, let me take it out of this and uh, create a new page for it. So what I'm given here for this two mark, it says if I can have a page so I'm having one question here it says you are given 3p squared q if I can write that down it's 3p squared q and then it's plus 15p q squared And then the other one is minus 12 PQ. And then you saw that this question was 12 marks. I mean, it was two marks. So it's three P squared, just to check three P squared plus 15 PQ squared minus 12 PQ. It's just two marks and they want you to um, factorize. So for me to be able to factorize by factorizing, meaning you need to take out what is common in each of the three terms. So we've got three terms here. This is the first term. And then after the sign, we have got the second term. After the sign, we have got the third term. So what is separating these are the two signs, the negative and the positive. So in a way, you have um, three terms. And in these three terms, 
when they say factorize, you need to find out what is common in each and every term. So for you to be able to do that, the first thing that you need to focus on are the numbers. Look at the numbers that you are given. You are given 3, you are given 15, and you are given, this is not, uh, it looks like 5 now, you are given 15, and you are given 12. Don't worry with the signs, just focus on the numbers. So from these numbers, if I'm given 3 and 15 and 12, my question is, I'm looking for a number that will go into 3, that will go into 15, and that will go into 12. You can see the, um, the lowest uh, common multiple of 3, 15, and 12 is 3. So in other ways, you're just looking for a number. You can use a calculator to say, I'm looking for a number. And that particular number must go into 3 without leaving a remainder into 15 and 12. So you, you And I chose that number to be 3. So you say 3 divided by 3, it gives me a 1. So 3 can go into 3. 15 divided by 3, it gives me a 5. So 3 can go into 15. And 12 divided by 3, it gives me a 4. So the number there is 3. Why? Because 3 can go into 3, it can go into 15, it can go into 12. So that's the first number that you're going to take out, which is 3. The next thing that you're going to look at is the most simplest thing. You have got P and Q. You can see PQ appears, PQ appears, and PQ appears. It must appear in all the three different terms. Remember, when we're saying factorizing, we're taking out the common factor, not only in 1 and 2, but it must be common in 1, 2, and 3. So you can see that P is appearing that in all the three terms. Now, what you need to do is to write the other powers for P. I've got P to the power of 2 in the first one. Uh, you can see that the power here is, uh, just to lose, the power there is 2. What about the power in the one second one? If it's not written, it means there is a power 1 there. And what is the power in the next one? It means there is a power 1 there. Now, whenever you are taking out the common factor in the variables like P, X, Y, Z, you always take the, small, the smallest power. So choose the smallest power. It is very simple when it comes to the letters. So the smallest power there, you can see that is P to the power of 1. You do the same with Q. Look at the smallest power. There is Q to the power 1, Q to the power of 2, Q to the power of 1. So I'm going to take Q to the power of 1. That is the simplest thing to do. So we have got all these. Um, in a way, it's 3 uh, P. It's 3 P1, Q1. Oh, I mean P to the power of 1 and Q to the power of 1. You can leave out those uh, power 1, power 1 because they don't change anything. So what am I doing when I'm saying this is the common factor? It means when I take each and every one of them, so the first one that I took, item 1 is 3, P squared Q. If I divide by what I call the common factor, which is that one, which is 3, P1, Q1. That's what I'm doing. And I'll take the second one, which is 15, P1, Q squared, I'm also going to divide by the common factor 3, P1, Q1. I'll also take the last one, which is 12, P, Q. I'll divide by 3, P1, Q1. That is actually what I'm doing whenever I'm saying I'm taking out the common factor. So the 3 goes into 3 once. The P1, now when you're saying P1 cancelling the P2, in this P2, you have got P times P. So one of them is going to cancel to remain with 1. So you cancel that 2 because there is 1 that you are subtracting. So you cancel the 2 and say 2 minus 1, only 1 will remain. The Q goes into Q once. So you can see that what remained there was, was a P. So it's P over 1 and P divided by 1 is simple a P. So that is what you are going to write inside that bracket as P. The sign that follows is a plus. You go to the one for the next term. You are saying 3 goes how many times into 15? 3 goes into 15 5 times. 
P1 goes into P1 once. Q1 goes into Q2. Remember, there are two on top, so I subtract one there so that I can remain with one. As I said, Q squared is Q times Q. If I divide by Q, one will cancel to remain with one Q. So we can see that what is remaining now, you have got five and you have got Q to the power of one. So you can leave out the power one, it's still fine, but um, even if you write that power one, nothing is wrong with that. So you are going to say 5 Q or Q to the power of 1. It's up to you. And then the last one is 12. 3, how many times 3 goes into 12? 3 goes into 12. 4 times the P goes into P once. The Q goes into Q once. So it's more 4 times 1 times 1. And the only thing that remaining there is a 4. Now the sign is minus and then we have got four like that so this is what we mean when we say factorize that's what we've done we've taken out the common factor so that's the part of factorization i hope this in a way uh, makes some sense let us move on to the next question so this was question 3.2.1 in a way 3.2.1 now let's look at 3.2.2 Two. What was the question saying? Again, it says factorize completely and we're given 3x, x minus 3. I can write that. It's 3x and then I've got x minus 3. See that? And then the next one is x minus 3 is in brackets and the next one is plus 2, 3 minus x. Just look at that. That's what, I'm okay. That's what I'm working on. And this question is 3 marks. And you need to get all those 3 marks. You can't afford to lose those 3 marks. So we've got 3x. x minus 3 plus 2. 3 minus x. So if I say plus 2. And then the other one is 3 minus x. It has got a lot of marks. But the working is actually even more simpler. Compared to the one, one that we did on top. But you need to be very strategic. You need to know what you are looking at. Now, whenever you are given a factorization that has already two brackets uh, in it, for you can see these are the two brackets. When they give you two brackets, you just know that the answer is almost there. You just need to do a few tricks and then your answer will be there. So now what do you do in this case? Now focus on the brackets. I've got x minus 3. I have got x, 3 minus x. You can see that the x is there and the 3 is there. The only thing are the signs that are different. You have got x that is positive here. You have got x that is negative. You have got 3 that is negative. You have got 3 that is positive. So it's a matter of the signs, but what is inside the bracket in a way is similar. So how do you, what do you do next is to match those brackets so how do i match the brackets you match the brackets let me interchange and start with x in the i mean rearrange and start with x in the other bracket so it will be 3x bracket x minus 3 plus 2 so i'm going to start with x but it is negative so it's negative x plus 3 see what i was saying to say it's almost same bracket but the signs are different when you are given something like that what you then need to do is to at this stage you take out from here you take out a negative so that's what you need to do take out a negative so what do you mean when I'm saying take out a negative you're going to see what it does so I've got 3x and I've got x minus 3 now when I'm taking out a negative what happens is this negative when i'm factorizing it out it will come here and change the positive to become negative so i'll have negative two then bracket whatever was negative becomes positive so this negative is now positive x um so it's positive x and the positive three becomes negative Three. So that's what is happening if you can see what I just did. That's how what I mean when I say take out a negative. You just interchange 
from this point going inside. So be careful whenever you're taking out the negative and you see what you interchange. So if I write this now, it means I've got 3x, then I've got x minus 3, and then I've got minus 2, and then I've got x minus 3. You can see that now, whatever I have inside the bracket, you can see that it is now matching. So when you have done that, the answer now is already done. So you write the first bracket, which is your x minus 3. And then you write what is outside the bracket. And you can see what is outside the bracket is that, which is 3x. Open another bracket. And then you've got 3x minus 2. So this is what they mean when they're talking about you need to factorize. Now remember... There are many ways of testing this, but what I always suggest is the simplest thing to test um, your answer. For example, let's say to test my answer, testing. Someone will say you can test by expanding. And remember, when you expand, you're multiplying this times this, and you're multiplying this times this, and you're multiplying that, and you're multiplying that. That is one way, but this is not what I mean on my side when I'm saying I'm testing. When I'm testing what I do, I choose any value of x. For example, let x be equal to 7. Just any value. You take that value of 7 here. So where there is x here, you put 7. x, you put 7. Where there is x, you put 7. Again, you go to your final answer. Where there is x, you put 7. Where there is x, you put 7. Remember, when you've got 3x like that, it's 3 times 7. When you've got 3x, you say 3 times 7 it becomes easier or you can use i'll show you what i usually use how my calculator i usually put it for that now when the answers are matching it means your answer is correct so let us start with the first one it was 3x so which is 3 times 7 don't say 37 because it will be wrong then you put a bracket and then it's 7 minus 3 close the bracket plus 7 okay it's 7 minus is 7 minus 3 plus 2 and then I've got 3 minus x which is minus 7 in this case and then what is my answer I'm getting 76 here so you can see that in here is give me 76 so what I do sometimes as I said if you want to avoid uh, whether you don't know whether I must write 37 or 7 what you do you say 7 equal to so this is your answer if you press ac and say answer you see it always your calculator always keeps the last answer even if you press on or zero there you press ac you press answer your calculator will always keep the last answer so what i do then i'll say three answer bracket answer minus three i close the bracket plus two then three minus answer so you see it it allows me I just want to go this side I can then at this stage without putting a times I just say three answer like three X it allows me for do that then I'm getting that answer which is 76 now I take the same value of, of X is equal to 7 into my final answer it was 7 minus 3 and then it's 3 X remember it's 3 X which is 3 times 7 minus 2 or you can use that part of saying 3 answer minus 2 if you call 2 I'm also getting a 76 here so it means when the answers are matching like that it means my factorizing from this part since it's giving me the same as that part it means my answer at that stage is correct so that's how we solve it now let us look at 3.2.3 you are given at this part which is 75 x squared minus 12 x and you can see how many marks is that it's giving you 30 marks again it's factorization which is 3.2.3 so let us look at that it's um question number three point two point three and the question is uh, you need to factorize completely 75 x cubed minus 12 x so it's 75 x cubed um, minus 12 x so this is what I have 
Now, you know, with these questions, I just want to show you the flow of these questions. You see, when I was looking at the first one, it was two marks. I just took out what one one common thing and then uh, there was one common part to say between the three items one was common so it's i took out a common factor in the second one it ended up being two brackets and this is a factorization that we also did so this is these are different factorization that we're doing and remember these are uh, factorization by grouping we are saying factorization in this case you will see what type of factorization i'm dealing with here it has got two items just one two items here and whenever you are dealing with two items something must be quick to come into your mind i haven't worked this question but whenever they say i must factorize and i see two items and i look at the marks it's three marks my question is what can the what can be a responsible for the three marks there is a higher chance that there will be a difference of two squares always watch out for the difference of two squares and in the difference of two squares remember you are given if you're given x squared minus y squared in the difference of two squared you open it two brackets it becomes x minus y and it becomes x plus y you remember that so that is what you do when you're talking about the difference of two squares so you in a way hide that you hide that so you can see that it's you are seeing x minus y that's what you write in the first bracket then the other one you oppose and you write x plus y so that is uh that part so be on watch out for that but if you look at this question there is no difference of two squares that i'm seeing which means i need to do something first before it can show up that difference of two squares the first things first is if i try 75 it's not a square remember to find that a number is a square what you need to do on that particular number is to uh, have the square root of that number so if i say square root of 75 you can see that it's 5 root 3 which means it's not a square if i also say square root of 12 equal to that you can see that these are not squares so what i need to do then there is nothing much that i need to do per se but now what I need to focus on is I'm looking for a common factor between 75 and 12. And in that common factor, in other words, I'm looking for a number that will go into 75 and 12 as well. Um, you will see that uh, from that, the number that can go into 75 and 12, if I can take um, a calculator just to uh, check which number can go into 75 and 12 so with that what i have if i can the main one is 12 here if i can divide for example 75 divided by 12 you can see that it's not giving me but something is interesting is giving me 25 over 4 so now if i can divide 75 by 3 75 divided by 3 see it's giving me 25 and if i give and divide 12 divided by 3 is giving me 4 so which means 3 is the common factor so i'm going to take out 3 there because 3 into 75 you saw it was 25 and 3 into 12 you saw it was 4 but at the same time between x cubed and x as i said whenever you're dealing with letters x is power 1 you take the smallest power which is that so i'm doing what i did in the first one the only difference is the first one is three items and this one is only two items so that's what i'm doing for now i'm saying in here like i did i have got 75 x cubed i'm dividing by 3x and i've got 12x I'm also dividing it by 3x I think that. so the 3 goes into 75 we saw it was 25 uh, times and then the x which is power 1 will cancel 3 of them and 2 are going to remain again the 3 goes into 12 4 times the x cancels the x and only 1 remains 
So in the first one, we have got 25x squared. You can see the 25. You can see the x squared there. So that's what I'm going to write here to say 25x squared. And then in the second one, after cancelling, you can see that I've got 4 remaining. So it's minus, there is the sign there, 4. So this is what I've already factorized. But the 3 marks doesn't uh, justify that. You can just leave your answer like that to get 3 marks. Remember, we did this kind of factorization. It was long, but we just got only 2 marks. So definitely, this cannot give us 3 marks just doing that. After all, they're just 2 now. So what you need, it means you need to go further and that's where now it comes in the difference of two squares. As I said, it's always hidden to be a difference of two squares. You come here and find the square of 25. You see, it's 5. You look at the square of 4, the numbers that are inside, you see it's 2. So which means I can write this as 3x bracket where there is 25. Remember, the square was 5, but it's 5 squared x squared minus for 4 it's 2 squared is a square so 2 the square of 2 is 4 the square of 5 is 25 remember 5 squared is same as 5 times 5 which is 25 uh, 4 is same as 2 times 2 which is 2 squared uh, uh, in a way so you see I have managed to express everything inside the bracket in terms of a square in terms of a square in terms of a square now the difference of two squares you see the part the difference means that sign minus and i've got a square on this side and i've got a square on this side so this is now a difference of two squares how do i write it whenever i'm dealing with a difference of two squares you say equal to it's 3x so what i'm actually doing is if i can take my eraser and remove this square you can see what i'm remaining with i'm remaining with 5x minus 2 so that is what is going to be in my first bracket so when i'm having my first bracket it must be 5x minus 2 the second bracket you just interchange that sign from minus it becomes a what a plus that's what you're doing so now if i do that remember what i was showing you so you have in a way, as I said, 5x minus 2. Then you have the second bracket, which is 5x plus 2. So this is now, when they say factorize completely, you have managed to factorize this. And then, as I told you, it's the 3 marks. How are they going to mark you? They're going to mark you that part, and they're going to mark you that bracket, and they're going to mark you that part. Then you get 3 marks for that so this is how you are supposed to approach this question 3.2.3 which says uh, you're supposed to factorize completely so that is um the part guys um to get your three marks now let us look at the last one in this section and we're going to continue our next part two and part two is going to focus on question four so this is going to be part one and it says find the value of 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 if x is equal to 3. This one I'm just going to work it here to say whenever you're given this question, we are given uh, is 3 marks. Just look at the mark allocation. It's 3 marks. So they are saying you need to find the value of this if x is equal to 3. So what they are saying is where there is x squared, where there is x actually you put 3. So where there is x you put 3. Where there is x, you put 3. So how do you write that now? What they are saying is you write your 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Now they say x is equal to 3. So what you do is you say 2. Where there is x squared, you put a bracket and then you say 3. And then you put that squared plus 5 where there is x you substitute it's called substitution and then where there is x you put a what a 3 minus 12 in a way avoid this temptation of writing it like this the 2x squared you say 2 
are 3 squared plus 5 3 minus 12 you see it looks like 23 squared plus 53 you just have to put either a times there now a times there it becomes 5 but the most accurate way always put brackets because if x becomes a negative then the answer automatically will be it will be very tricky for you to ensure that you get the right answer so the most important step there is ensuring that you protect the x with bracket so when you've done that your calculator they didn't say don't use a calculator so in this case you just have to uh, rely on your calculator for you to be able uh, to get the final answer and if I do that it's 2 you enter in the calculator as is 3 close the bracket put a square plus 5 open the bracket put a 3 close it minus 12 so you enter the way you, you you wrote it and if i do that i'm getting 21 so this is then they say find the value of that if said and then which this is the value of that if x is equal to 3 so guys that is how you can ensure that you grab all these marks if we look at the mark allocation here it is 3 if you add 3 plus 3 plus 3 which is 9 plus 2 which is 11 so already the 11 marks were not that complicated you are going to be able to get those 11 marks if you do um, the way you, you you answer you don't panic you look at the questions one step at a time know where you are if they're giving you three items like that with mixed numbers look at what is common in the second one whenever they give you two brackets one with a different in signs but looking similar remember the concept of taking out a negative from it so that you can match those brackets and lastly if they give you two terms and they want you to factorize and see that it has got high marks the chances are it will be a difference of two squares but you need to create that difference of two squares first factorize they hide it inside like here it was hidden inside the 75 x cubed minus 12 x so you need to take out what you think was supposed to be common in this case it was 3 x and then you find that inside that there is your difference of two squares and then when you do that trust me you are not going to get it wrong as i say also just uh something coming in my mind to say don't you test in this case i also do test so what I do, choose any value of x, for example, x is equal to, um, just choose any number like any number that comes in your mind, let's say 4, let's say x is equal to 4, so what I do, where there is an x, I will put a 4, I will put a 4, I will put a 4, and then even in the, in the first question, where there is x, I put a 4, and I put a 4, my answers must just match, and if they are matching, then you know, um, the answer is correct so let me quickly do that remember I said the way you can do it you can say 4 is equal to so that is my answer answer is equal to 4 so you can simply say 75 answer cubed I mean the first one minus 12 answer I'm getting 4752 this 4752 I do the same thing repeat again 4 is equal to so that is now my answer so i'll say three answer bracket five answer minus two five answer plus two it was four seven five two something like that there is four seven five two if you confused of what i did you just have to simple say three times four bracket five times or you can put a bracket here and say 4 minus 2 close the bracket you see i opened i opened i closed i closed then you open a new bracket it's 5 substitute with your 4 close it and then plus 2 and close it it will still give us that same answer of 4752 so guys i hope this is of benefit to you and you are able to follow up on these lessons remember to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so so that every time i post in new videos you will be notified 
so i want you to follow these revision sessions across i'll be bringing all the sections and remember there are five content areas i'm going to cover each and every one of them as we started so that by the time you are able to write your exams you will have done quite a lot of of, of mathematical uh, calculations as possible see you again next time on part two so this is what i'm going to focus on and you can see part two has got a lot of uh, some work 4.1 and 4.2 up to 4.3 i mean this is 31 marks so definitely you need to ask yourself how can i ensure that i get those 31 marks because after getting these 31 marks it will boost your confidence and you'll be able to say i know without a reasonable doubt that my final exam is going to produce good marks we have come to the end of our session. Thank you.